as new species in the course of time are formed through natural selection, others will become rarer and rarer and finally extinct. Once wrote Charles Darwin. So the Ferrari Testarossa, for example. Back in the 80s, this car was very successful on being the first practical, performance-oriented, and strikingly beautiful at the same time. The first of its kind, I must say. Unfortunately, the Testarossa is also the last specimen of a performance-oriented engine family with uh, a flat 12 configuration that began back in 1964 at Formula One and was extinct in the last century. But its extinction wasn't done without first spawning two new mutations, the rare 512TR and the even rarer 512M. In this video, we are going to address one of the most controversial Ferraris of all time. And a still, a question still remains. Does its F1 heritage still code its own DNA? And which kind of roar does this Formula One engine can produce? So first, we must analyze the whole family tree of the Testarossas. It began here back in 1985 with the original Testarossa, and there were around 7,000 cars produced in the road. Uh, a few bits of modifications were done until 91, where we have the new version, which was called 512TR. The 512TR had a lot of new modifications in the design, in the engine, in the structure, and with the implementations of new systems. Around 2,000 512TRs were produced. And in the end, in 1994, we had the F512M, which only around 500 cars were produced, and this is one of those that we are going to dissect in this video. Here at the front we have some new striking features. The first one, the front bumper lip, this is new, which creates a little downforce. Also we have some brake ducts for cooling the front brakes here. And uh, the front grille is this rounded shape ones, very peculiar to the 90s and reminds us of the F50. And over here we have the most controversial feature of the F512M, which is the framed headlights. There is no more pop-up headlights as we have on the Tesserosas. And just take a look at the whole assembly here. It's very beautiful, very interesting, even looking from the inside. And in the end, we also have here at the front this rounded shape hood or front door, and also two Naka ducts, which reminds us also of the F40, and a slightly raised rear lip there over the windshield. So here at the side, we also have some new features. Uh, the most striking ones are the new side mirrors. They are now mounted at the windows. On the original Tessarossa, we only had one, and which were single mounted here at the A column. Also, we must talk about the wheels. Just take a look at this outrageous wheel design. It is a two-piece. There is still a five-spoke wheel, but here is twisted and also the small bolts that holds the two pieces together. We also have no longer a center lock here. This is a more conventional five bolt fixation. And also here at the front, it is a 18 inch wide wheel 
and at the rear it is a 10.5 inch wide wheel as well and it is a 18 inch wheel bigger wheels meant bigger brakes and here we have a four piston caliper brake and also a drilled rotor and here at the side also the side mounted intake for the side mounted radiators with two the original fins of the Tessarossa. They would be crazy to change that, right? And also a few modification, a few hint of something that happened between Pininfarina and Ferrari. Here at the 512M, we have Diseño di Pininfarina. This means that this car was originally designed by Pininfarina and the first Tessarossas, mostly of them, were built under the roof of the Pininfarina factory and then they were transferred to the Ferrari factory for the rest of the modifications. And, but here, since 1993, the um, Tessarossa's family were all built, including the body, inside Ferrari's factory. So here we have the design or design by Pininfarina, but entirely built by Ferrari. Here at the bonnet, also a lot of changes. We have that black grille from the original model replaced by a red body grille which more rounded shapes. And also here we have, uh, on the original model, we have like an upper cap to the engine. But since here the, on the F512, the engine was lowered a little bit, we don't have more the necessity to uh, open room for the top of the engine here. So this upper cap here is slightly shorter. Also through the blinders we can see a little bit of the details of the engine and also of the exhaust. And also the rear pillar goes further back until the end here on the other controversial part of the design of this car. The rear end. So here at the rear end of the car a lot of controversy. Uh, the original taillights were hidden by that uh, black grille here and uh, this was changed here. We now have the taillights over the grille, there is this grille here at the middle, but we have now four rounded taillights. It is a very come and go feature at the designs of the Ferraris. Also the rear bumper and also the rear and inferior diffuser was changed, but we still have the quad tips exhaust pipes that emphasizes the 12 cylinder engine. So in the 512 TR, we already had some modifications here in the interior regarding the original interior at the Tessarossa, but the basics are still the same. The car is very low, the hoof is low, and there's this sign coaster here that you have to go over it. So it's not a very ergonomic entrance, but in the end, you kind of manage yourself to do it. Here in the inside, uh, regarding the pedals, nothing was changed. We still have that using both configurations with the pedals to the side. So here is the center and here is my accelerator foot, right? This is because of the wheel arch here, which is very close to my left foot. So you kind of drive this car to the side here. But there were some modifications at the Modificata with this new drilled aluminum pedals. Here, the center console was also changed back on the TR model. So we have a new gouge cluster here with a clock a fuel gouge uh, which doesn't work on this particular model and also the very important engine oil temp gauge right and also here at the center the new center coso the gear knob was changed there is a little bit of inclination here and all of the linkages actually were uh, changed to ball bearing configurations and also the knob here at the modificata is made of pure aluminum. The climate control is pretty much unchanged and we still have 
those two flags, the Ferrari and the Pininfarina flag here. And also there is this very interesting feature, which is the glove box. There is a button that when you have the car on, you press and the, the center mirror here opens up. It is as huge as your vanity. Also, the seats has this new ribbed design and uh, a little bit more rigid to the original Testarossa design. The steering column also have the same tilt adjustment. There is no telescopic adjustment here. And the steering wheel is also new. We have this new design and the horn, which was here, is also here. This is the very elegant F512M horn sound. Not bad. Here the, on the instrument cluster, we have the still the same dials and gouges here. We have the, the speedometer, we have the rev counter, engine coolant temperature and engine oil pressure. The odometer was transferred to here. Uh, the original was on the center console. Also hidden here under the cluster, we have this very peculiar ABS cancel button for you to cancel the ABS system. The original Tessa Rosa didn't have ABS and here on the Modificata we have the system, but I don't know why would one disable this system on a million dollar car. Also here at the steering column we have the key and we can turn on the engine. Here inside the engine bay we have on the same assembly the engine, the transfer case, the transmission and the differential. They all come part of the same assembly here. On the transmission side we have a lot of improvements on materials and linkages and um, also on the differential side, at the clutch side, everything was improved because on, back on the Tessa Rosses, everything usually started to fall to pieces and break. Here is a much more sturdier and robust system that doesn't give the same problems that we have on the other generations of this car. But here we still have the same engine family, the same heritage of the F113 engine family. Also, when we talk about the F113 family, uh, we must talk about the controversial language problem that we have here. We have an engine problem here with the classification of the nature of this engine. Uh, some say that this is a V12 at uh, 180 degrees and some say this is a flat 12 engine. Well, uh, we have to analyze the engine from two different perspectives. If you approach this engine by the engine block perspective, you're gonna see that there are 12 cylinders here which were uh, assembled on a 180 degrees configuration. So this would make this engine a flat 12 engine. But if you see by the crankshaft perspective, you're gonna see this is not a flat plane crankshaft. This is more of a V configuration engine crankshaft. And this is because on a flat plane crankshaft, the rod journals, they are from the opposite cylinders, they are not shared. And on a V configuration engine crankshaft, we have the opposing cylinders sharing the same rod bearing journal. So the firing order of this V12 engine, it is a firing order of a V12 engine. But the V is on a 180 degrees angle, which in the end makes this engine a 180 degrees V12 engine or a flat 12 engine. It depends on which perspective you approach the subject. Here on the Modificata, the engine is uh, still a um, 4.9 liters engine with the same twin overhead cams and four valves per cylinder. 
but all of the auxiliary systems, the injection system and the ignition system were much improved in comparison to the original Testarossa systems. Here we have uh, an electronic fuel injection system, a motronic system, which replaces the original continuously uh, injection by mechanical means, which was called the KAGtronic system. We have a video here on the, our Portuguese version of this channel that we struggle a little bit to make the mechanical injection system of one original Tessarossa to work properly. Here, we don't have this problem anymore. All of the intake and injection system were improved. We have the air path here. We have the intakes, inlets. We have a new air box. We have um, air mass sensor here, which uh, calculates the injection quantity and also the load of the engine. And all of the intake planons don't have to uh, house the mechanical injection system anymore. So everything is a little bit smaller here and prettier as well. And we can see here on the side, very accessible. We have the fuel injectors, the fuel rail, the fuel feed system with the filters, a much more conventional and actual system. Also on the ignition side, we have now a wasted park system with a control module and some of the ignition cables. A little bit of improvement here on both the injection and ignition system to a much more conventional and efficient system. So indeed we have some improvement here on the auxiliary systems, on the fuel delivery system and on the ignition system, but the most delicious parts here of the upgrade side of this engine family, uh, it is on the internals. All of the components here on the internals were improved. The pistons are now forged, made of aluminum, uh, with a little bit of a higher compression ratio, 10.4 here on the aerospec. We also have the crankshaft. It was made of a billet part, which is lighter and sturdier. And also on the flywheel and clutch side, we have lighter components. In the end, the titanium connecting rods that we have here, which are much lighter than the originals. And all of these upgrades makes this engine have a, a new rev nature, much more freely and faster uh, revs and uh, because of the lighter moving parts here. In the end, all of these improvements makes this engine much more freely and faster rev nature to the moving parts here and brings back this engine to its ancestors, to this uh, Formula One heritage that this engine family has. So back in the original model, the Tessarossa first on 85, on the US model, February declared that the F 113 a delivered 380 horsepower and also 470 newton meters of torque. Here in the end version, the last version on the Modificata, the F113G delivers, declared by Ferrari, 440 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque on the Aerospec model. Titanium connecting rods in 1996. This is a real Formula One heritage here for this engine family. And here I must recall the question that I've placed on the beginning of this video about the roar and engine sound potential that we might have hidden here on a recessive gene at this engine family. Is it possible that we have a real Formula One uh, sound potential here hidden? Well, there is a company here in Brazil that does some exhaust gene therapy here and they claim that they are able to restore this roar potential, this Formula One noise, sound and symphony on the exhaust side, which is called the secret weapon exhaust factory.
So here, this is the only 512M in the road that went through this gene therapy section here on the exhaust side made by the secret weapon exhaust factory. First have on the exhaust header side, we have uh, F1 uh, style tubing, long tubing uh, with a ceramic coating there. And also here at the cat back side, we have um, a very special titanium system that works with all of these frequencies and raises the F1 heritage here on this engine. It's a very complex engine, very different from the other ones that they did on other Tesla Rosses. Here on the cat back side, the diagram is much more complex. We have some catalytic converters and also a rear muffler with very special technology of frequency filtering on the lower and mid range of the frequencies uh, without touching the high ends, the Formula One ends of those frequencies. Also, we have a, a valve system here, which is remotely controlled. We have two modes here. The closed one, which we, we are calling the civil mode, and also the open one, which we're calling the military. So before you test drive your new 512, you have to wait for the oil temperature to raise above the 80 degrees Celsius. So all of the uh, components are expanded properly and uh, you can start to explore the revs and uh, a little bit more of load on this engine. It is worth mentioning that this engine doesn't have one roar, but two kinds of very different roars. Uh, the first one comes from the intake system. So it is very peculiar to this engine family. Uh, I've heard this kind of cadence, this kind of frequency on uh, the other flat 12s that I got the opportunity to drive, uh, other Testa Rosses. It is very peculiar to this family, almost like a, a genetic heritage to this, to this engine family. And, and I can hear this pretty much here. It is very defined because the intake system comes very close to my ear here, to the side of the car. So this is enough for you to get very excited driving this car, of course. And um, <laughs> yeah, suits very well to the to the whole GT purpose of this car, of course. Very elegant and refined. Doesn't bother you. Uh, there's no resonance. So yeah, not bad. And of course that I can hear the intake roar because I'm with the exhaust, with the valves closed, so it is very civilized. But I'm pretty sure that you'll click it on this video, not to hear it on the civil mode, but on the military mode, right? Let me open the window. Shift one gear down. And... This never gets old, dude. <laughs> so in the Portuguese version of this channel, uh, I had a chance to test another Testa Rosa, which uh, even had another secret weapon exhaust but with a different purpose, a different frequency and um, roar. So there on the other Tessa Rossa, the engine sound was 
uh, much more intensive and aggressive as well. But it had more definition. It was much more defined on the mid revs. Here, there is another nature of sounds and frequency. There is some kind of whale here, uh, Formula One uh, whale, and. Um, Listen to that, dude. Ah! Oh my god. This never gets old. Again. <laughs> so, the, in the end, very different exhaust, very different nature. The, the frequencies on the higher side are much more complex. There is some kind of reverb here. There. <laughs> and um, a different nature to this engine as well. Not bad, not bad at all. It's, it, it is here, around the 4,000 RPM. of this biology journey that we did on this video one thing is for sure there is even on the most controversial Ferraris ever made a hidden gene of Formula One plantation for engine sound and noises and this is only possible because of the technologies that we have available today the gene therapy technologies on the exhaust sides. And I want to know your thoughts on this new engine noise that the secret weapon gene therapy uh, session here were able to provide to this very peculiar model here. This video ends here. I'm Guilherme and this is Avantgarde.